The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? ClickWood here, back again with another Madden 18 Ultimate Team video for you guys. Today, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the new upgrade sets. Uh, I guess they're not really new, but they're they're actually going to be important today. The time when that when the time that you guys are actually watching this video, if you haven't already gone in and done your predictors, I'm going to really highly recommend that you go ahead and do these guys. Uh, there's a set of solo challenges that you can do. I'll quickly pull those up on the screen if you guys are un uh, unaware. But it's basically an easy way for you to get some coins, okay? Um, so basically what we're going to do is go over here to Predictor. I've already completed them. They're only two games, and you get all of them. So that makes it really, really easy. Um, basically, you just play two games. They're both on pro difficulty, and you can easily get all 16 uh, in both of them. So it's a total of 32 Predictor cards that you get. And then uh, you can actually take them and put them into some sets to get yourself some coins. So let's go over here. Let's take a look at the predictor and uh, then click, obviously, on NFL Week 1. There are 34 total, so I guess maybe I miscounted. No, actually, no, that is correct because there's two here that you can swap from a true to a false and false to a true. Um, so basically what you're going to want to do here is determine whether these things here are either going to be true or false. So that's going to give you the quick... Uh, kind of the idea here. You also can potentially get some really good coin rewards for these. Um, you see there on the screen, if you get 20 of them correct, you're going to get 5,000 coins, 24 of them, 15,000, 28, you're going to get 50,000. And if you get the most of anybody, you're going to get your choice of an 89 or above overall player. So I'm, ba I'm assuming those are going to be base elites, but you never know. It could be uh, legends and things like that potentially too. So Basically, guys, what we're going to try to do here is get ourselves as many of these correct as we can. I'm going to explain to you guys why I'm choosing each of these things. There are a couple of them that are guarantees, by the way, guys. So uh, make sure that you watch this and you'll at least guarantee yourself some coins in this video. So uh, first one here, we're going to start off with the Jets at the Bills. Um, I do have this one as being true. So I'm going to go in ahead in here and drop this true for it. Uh, it's a Bills win. I think that the Bills are going to get this W here. Uh, they're at, they're in um, Buffalo. So I think that's a, a pretty good opportunity for them to get the win. So we are going to choose them. Obviously, the Jets are not a very good team. So we're going to hope that that one is correct for us. Then uh, we'll go down here. Jets at Bills. LaShawn McCoy getting 100 plus rushing yards. I'm going to go ahead and say false on this one. And the reason for it is that LaShawn McCoy hasn't had a whole lot of success against the Jets in the past, at least in the recent past. So I don't really like his opportunity of getting 100 plus in this one. It's very possible that he could do it, but I don't think it's necessarily likely. So I'm going to go ahead and say false on that. 100 plus yards is actually a lot more difficult than people make it out to be. Most running backs don't get more than a handful of 100 yard games in the season. Um, LaShawn McCoy is a guy who could potentially put up 100 total yards in this game or 100 rushing yards. But I think it's more likely that he does it with rushing and receiving than just rushing. So then uh, let's go down here. Falcons at Bears result. Uh, this is Bears win. I think we got to go false on this, guys, because, uh, I mean, let's be honest here. The Bears are not a very good team. At least they don't look like they are on paper. The Patri or the um, uh, the Falcons look like they're a pretty good team. Obviously, they're coming off of being in the Super Bowl. They were the NFC representative in the Super Bowl. Damn near blew out the Patriots in the Super Bowl if they wouldn't have had a monumental collapse in that second half. So I still like them as being one of the better teams in the NFL this season. And against the Bears in Week 1, yeah, it's in Chicago, but I think that should be a pretty easy win. Then the second one is in regards to Jordan Howard scoring at least one touchdown. Now, I think that the Falcons are going to do a pretty good job of getting out in front in this game, which is going to lead, in my opinion, to fewer rushing attempts in general for Jordan Howard, which is obviously going to lower his chances of scoring a touchdown. In addition to that, Jordan Howard, despite being the second leading rusher in the NFL in 2016, he actually only scored in five specific games. He did score more touchdowns in that because he had a couple games where he had multiple, but he only had five games in which he scored a touchdown. So we are going to choose false for this one as well. And I think that you're going to see that this is a pretty big trend for me in in, in terms of uh, actually predicting these. A lot of the ones that are stat predictions, I think they're kind of going overboard on here in week one. Maybe they'll change that going forward. Um, but I'm picking false for a hell of a lot of those. 
So let's go on to the next one. This is Ravens at Bengals result. Bengals win. I am going to go ahead and say true to that one. Joe Flacco just has not had a hell of a lot of success against the Bengals. And when you're in Cincinnati, I like that. Flacco has not practiced at all, really. So uh, I'm not really sure what his chances are of actually performing well in this one. So I like the Bengals. They're a pretty decent team to begin with. And then we look at A.J. Green having one or more receiving touchdowns. Now, this is actually going to be one of the rare ones where I'm actually going to go ahead and say true on this. I'm going to go ahead and give this one to A.J. Green. Um, A.J. Green has actually scored in five straight games against the Ravens. That includes a 10-catch, 227-yard two touchdown performance against them in week three of 2015. So yeah, he has pretty much owned the Ravens in recent years. Obviously, he didn't get much of an opportunity to do that last year, unfortunately, but you know, um, AJ Green's still a stud. So uh, Steelers at Browns. I think that this one, um, obviously the Browns winning, I think this one's probably one of the easier ones to predict. Again, it is in Cleveland. It's a road division game that's never easy. But um, yeah, Browns win. We got to go false on that. I mean, come on. You got to go false on that. So then we'll talk about the next one, which is, I think, a guarantee. And that is, will Miles Garrett get one or more sacks? This is the number one overall pick from the 2017 draft. And uh, guess what? He's not playing in this game. So I think that's a pretty easy one to say false on. That's pretty much your guarantee. That's your stone cold lock of the week. There you go. Uh, now Cardinals at Lions. Oh, excuse me. I accidentally clicked out of it. Um, Cardinals at Lions is the next one. This one I don't think is um, is very easy to predict, unfortunately. I am going to go ahead and say false on it. So basically it's saying Lions win. I think the Cardinals are going to get the win in this game, but I don't think it's going to be particularly easy. So I, I'm not super confident in this one. Um, if you wanted to avoid this one and maybe guarantee yourself one of the other more difficult ones, uh, I, I could see going in that direction as well if you wanted to do that. So when I say that guarantee, you can actually uh, – actually, you know what? In this these sets, you can't now that I come to think of it. I was, I was trying to remember. I, I remember in the past you could actually – on some of these predictor ones, you could actually do the true and the false and just like guarantee yourself that one. But uh, I guess you can't do that this year. So my guess on this one is going to be false. I am going to say that I think the, uh, the Cardinals will get the job done in this one. Now, Cardinals against the Lions, Matt Stafford having two or more passing touchdowns. It's hard to predict anyone to pass for more than or two or more touchdowns against this defense because that puts them on a pace of 32 touchdowns given up, and they're not going to allow 32 passing touchdowns this year. So I'm going to say false on that. I do think Stafford is one of the better quarterbacks as far as pure skills go in the NFL, but they just I, I just don't think they're going to have a great opportunity to score a hell of a lot of points in this one. The um, the uh, Cardinals defense is very, very good. So I'm, I'm not expecting huge game out of Matt Stafford. Jaguars at Texans result. Uh, this one, they're predicting the Texans win. So I am going to go with true on that. Texans have uh, done pretty well uh, in recent years against the Jaguars. Well, pretty much everybody's done well against the Jaguars, unfortunately, in recent years. So we'll take that. And then the other one actually has to do with J.J. Watt. So will J.J. Watt get one or more sacks? Now, we haven't seen J.J. Watt play in over an entire season. So this one is not easy to predict, but I am actually going to go with true in this case because I think J.J. Watt coming back is going to be super pumped up. They're going to figure out a way to get him some opportunities at a sack to get, to get him kind of going for the 2017 season. I, I really think it's going to happen. So I like the possibility here of J.J. Watt getting the sack. So we are going to choose true for that one. Now let's go down here. Buccaneers at Dolphins are going to be the next one. This is the other ones that are a guarantee, okay? This game is not happening this week, right? We know that this game has been moved to week 11. Both the teams had a bye week, obviously, um, in week 11. So they were able to shift it due to the hurricane situation down there in Florida. So this game is actually not going to be played here in week one. So when it says Dolphins win, we know for a fact that that is going to be false because they cannot win a game that is not going to play. So uh, there you go. We get that one. That one is pretty easy. And then obviously the other one as well. Uh, this one has to do with Jarvis Landry. I didn't even read it, to be honest with you. Jarvis Landry has 100 plus receiving yards. I would have said no to begin with that. I mean, Jarvis Landry is a good receiver, but that's a pretty huge pace to go at. So false for that one as well. 
So now we're going to go down. The next set of games is going to be Raven, uh, Raiders excuse me, versus Titans. And uh, this one is a Titans win. Man, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this one when I pick this. I am going to go ahead and say uh, that the Titans are going to get the win here. So I'm going to go with True on this one. Um, I, I know the Titans are not an elite team. But they're the kind of team that can beat the Raiders, especially when they're playing at home. Uh, they had an opportunity to beat the Raiders last year when these teams played. And just some stupid penalties down the stretch actually ended up costing them. So I think that they're going to be able to avoid that this year. And I think that they're going to be able to get the win against the Raiders. Although, again, I'm not super confident in this one. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders won. So if you wanted to sway against me on this one, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be upset or anything like that. I wouldn't call you dumb. I just personally think the Titans can get the job done here. And it might be Ryan915 hyping up these damn Titans to me once again. And I'm setting myself up, self up for disappointment. But I don't think so. Next one, uh, Marcus Mariota having 200-plus passing yards and 20-plus rushing yards. So this is one where I think you have to go in and analyze it a little bit closer. I think he'll get the 200 passing yards. The 20-plus rushing yards is actually the tougher part for this. He definitely has the skills to do it, but he's only rushed for 20 or more yards in 11 of his 27 career games. So that's fewer than half of the games has he done it. And he's only done both things where he rushed for 20-plus for yards and passed for 200-plus yards seven times in 27 career games. So that's about one quarter of the time is he actually doing both of those things. Granted, this game's at home, and it's against a defense that's not particularly good, but I just think that the odds, just the pure odds of it that we've seen so far throughout his career of him doing both of those things, only about one out of every four games, I think we got to take the odds here and say that it's most likely that he's not going to be able to do both of those things in this game. Now we're going to go down here and talk about the Eagles and the Redskins. Um, this one is, in my opinion, one of the biggest toss-ups that there is of the week. I think if this game was being played in Philadelphia, I, I would be much more confident in Philadelphia's chances of winning this game. But, um, you know, I, I think you look at it and you say, are the Redskins a team that defends their home field advantage particularly well? Eh, not, not great. Um, they're, they're decent at home. They're, they're certainly not bad at home, but I don't think they're a particularly great team. They've also got some new offensive stuff working in for them. Uh, definitely new players in their offense. I think they're going to have a little bit of time. Uh, they're going to need a little bit of time rather to to actually get that working. So I am going to go ahead and say that the, um, uh, that the, uh, Eagles are going to get the win here. So we're going to say false on the Redskins getting the win here. Um, again, Pretty difficult to lose Deshaun Jackson and Pierre Garçon this offseason, but they did pick up a new wide receiver, and that is Terrell Pryor. Now, the predictor here is, will he have six or more receptions? So going back to 2016, when he had his breakout season as a member of the Cleveland Browns, he actually only had six or more receptions in five of his games. So that's about one third of the games that he did that. And only three receptions against the Eagles, specifically in Week 17. Now, granted, he's going to have a much better quarterback situation here with Kirk Cousins versus what he had in Cleveland. But still, I think doing it in his first game with a new team is going to be difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and say false on this one. I'm going to say that Terrell Pryor is not going to get six or more receptions. Although, if he did, again, I wouldn't be that surprised by it. He certainly has the skills to do it. It's just, it's just a difficult thing to do is all. So then we've got the Colts at the Rams for a result. Rams win. Now, the Rams are the home team in this one. The Colts are going to be without quarterback Andrew Luck, although the Rams are going to be without their superstar defensive tackle, Aaron Donald. So I am going to actually still say true. I think that the Rams are going to get the job done here. They're going to get the win. Um, the Colts, first of all, are one of the least talented teams on paper in the entire NFL, and they're missing their best player. So I do not like that very much. I, I think this could be a pretty bad game for them. Um, this could be one of those games where the Rams actually get out and win the game pretty handily, oddly enough. Um, but let's take a look at the next one, which is Todd Gurley getting one or more touchdowns. Now, I like his chances in this game maybe better than any other game on the schedule to score a touchdown on paper. 
But if you're asking me a 50-50 question, is he going to score a touchdown or not? I have to say no. He only scored six touchdowns in 2016. Now, granted, I do expect them to be better this year at scoring rushing touchdowns. But at the same time, man, it's difficult to predict that a guy who only scored six a year ago is going to score a touchdown in this one. Um, Certainly possible, again, because I do think the Rams have an opportunity to get out for a lead here in this game. And that could mean plenty of opportunities for Gurley. But there's just a lot that could happen that would lead to him not scoring a touchdown, even if it's something as fluky as him rushing all the way down to like the two yard line, getting tackled and then going out for a breather or something like that. Predicting touchdowns is extremely difficult to do. And I almost never say that a player is going to score a touchdown like a skill position player, unless it's somebody that's like a, you know, um, a David Johnson or maybe an Ezekiel Elliott at running back or maybe an Antonio Brown or an Odell Beckham Jr. or somebody like that at wide receiver. It's just it, it's so difficult to predict that because most of these players don't score even a touchdown every two games, let alone every game. So to to predict that they're going to score in a specific game, I think, is a losing proposition most of the time, uh, unless the matchup is just amazing for whatever reason. And granted, it, again, for Gurley, it's probably as good as it's going to get all year. But still, uh, their offense is not particularly good. So I I don't love predicting a touchdown out of him in really any game, to be honest with you. Um, The next one, we've got Seahawks at Packers. Uh, The game result for this one is predicting uh, Packers win. I am going to go ahead and say true. I think this is going to be the game of the week, and it is a difficult one to predict for sure. Obviously, the Packers are a good team. Um, The uh, Seahawks are definitely a good team as well, but on the road, I think the Seahawks are not nearly as good as they are at home. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to defend that home field, and he's going to get out to a pretty nice game, I think, or a pretty nice start to the season. So uh, let's take a look here, though, at what the next one is, and I think I might be kind of contradicting myself a little bit in saying that, but... It says Aaron Rodgers having 300 plus passing yards and two or more passing touchdowns. So this is another one of those where I think we have to go in and analyze it a little bit deeper. Rodgers threw for 300 or more yards in six of his of his 16 games in 2016 regular season wise. And he threw for two or more touchdowns in 10 of those 16 or in 10 of 16 games. However, the Seahawks only gave up 300 plus yards once in 2016. So that's not not a very good opportunity, in my opinion. Um, and they only gave up two or more touchdowns in four games. So for Aaron Rodgers to do both of those things, first of all, he doesn't throw for 300 or more yards in even half of his games to begin with. That's against your average defense, okay? That's just right off the top. So the chances of him doing this and getting both are less than 50% right there. Then then you take into consideration the Seahawks defense only giving up that one 300-yard game a season ago. So that reduces those chances pretty substantially from there. And again, they only gave up the two-plus touchdowns in four games. So I think I've got to go false here. I think Aaron Rodgers is the most likely quarterback in the league to do this against Seattle. Battle, but I don't think you can predict any team to to throw for 300 yards and two touchdowns in a game against the Seahawks unless they're missing like Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor and Richard Sherman in a game. Then okay, give me give me Aaron Rodgers to throw for 300 and two. All right. Next one, Panthers at 49ers. Uh, the result of this one, 49ers win. I am going to say that this is false. I think that we're going to get a Carolina win here in this game. Um, it looks like it could be a pretty nice day on paper for the Carolina Panthers offense. Um, the 49ers defense is still not particularly great. Their offense isn't particularly great either. And I think this is one of those games where Carolina can maybe just kind of lean on the 49ers and just break them throughout the game. Uh, I think it'll be close early. 49ers might even get out to a lead early, but I think that the balance of the rosters and just the the skill position players for the Panthers, specifically Cam Newton, is going to eventually take over this game and he will end up getting the win for the Panthers on the road in week one. Now, the 49ers do have another one on here, Pierre Garçon getting six or more receptions in a game. And again, I don't usually like to recommend that you go with the trues on these because these numbers are huge. If you were to actually go in and say, what is Pierre Garçon going to do? Six or more receptions um, in a 16-game season. Now, if he, if he, so basically, if he got six receptions every game this season, in, in the regular season, that's 96 catches on the year. What do you think the odds are that Pierre Garçon is going to get 96 catches in a year? Probably not great. However, I will say this. Pierre Garçon does have a history of great success in Kyle Shanahan offenses. He is going to San Francisco, um, and obviously Kyle Shanahan is going to 
feed his number one wide receiver. He always does that. So I do expect that Pierre Garçon is going to be a big focal point of this offense. It is his first game with the 49ers, but the Panthers secondary is among the absolute worst in the NFL right now. I think, again, if the Panthers do get out to a lead in this game, that we could see quite a bit of passing out of the 49ers. So I think that that is going to lead Pierre Garçon getting right around six catches. So I am going to go a little bit against the grain of what I normally do, and I am going to actually predict true on this one, that Pierre Garçon is going to get six or more receptions in this game. Now we're getting to the prime time games, boys. Sunday night football, my Dallas Cowboys against the New York Giants in Dallas. All right, fine. I'm going to go ahead and just say I'm going to pick the homer one on this. Eat it. How about that? I am picking the Dallas Cowboys to win this football game. Um, and, and it isn't just me being a homer. Maybe that plays a little bit of a factor to it. But the Cowboys, just indiscriminately of how I feel, they're a four-point favorite at home. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, obviously, Ezekiel Elliott is not going to be out of this game. He is in, not suspended. And Odell Beckham Jr. is hurt. So the Cowboys maybe gained their best player, and the Giants might be without their best player. So you tell me that two games, yes, the Giants did beat the Cowboys in both of their games last year. Fair point. However, I think it's worth noting that both of those games were very, 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 very close. And so I am going to go ahead and pick the Cowboys to win this one. I think it's going to be a close game once again, but I do like the Cowboys to slightly edge them out in this game. Next one, we have... Uh, the uh, Dak Prescott one. So this one is Dak Prescott throwing for 250 or more passing yards and one or more touchdowns. So let's go in and take a look at the numbers that he got last year. He only threw for 250 or more yards five times in 2016. And against the Giants, he only threw for 227 yards and 165 yards. He also only threw for one total touchdown in the two games that he played against them. So I think this one is a pretty safe one to say false in. I think this would have been a little bit more likely if the Cowboys were without Ezekiel Elliott. But given the fact that they're going to be able to lean on him a little bit in this one, I like the possibilities here of uh, Dak Prescott you know, not getting to that number. I think that we're going to get more Ezekiel Elliott in this one. So uh, I think the, the odds are pretty good in this one. So next one, Cowboys at Giants. We've gotten one for Eli Manning as well. So that means actually three for this game. Um, and this one is, will Eli Manning throw an interception? Uh, it's saying Eli Manning throws zero interceptions. Um, I am going to go ahead and say true on this one. Now, I actually have only trues remaining. So I will show you guys there is going to be at least one more where we get false. Um, so if you're wondering how to, to do this, basically, um, let me break that down for you in just a moment. But let's let's explain why I'm picking true for Eli Manning throwing zero picks in this game. A guy who throws a lot of interceptions, mind you. Um, the Cowboys had just nine interceptions in 2016. That's the third fewest in the league. Their secondary might be worse this year than it was last year, so that doesn't help. And not only that, but if you go back even a year before, it wasn't fluky that the Cowboys didn't force a lot of interceptions last year. They only had eight interceptions in 2015, so that was actually less than they had last year when they were the third fewest. So they were the least amount of interceptions in 2015, the third fewest in 2016, and yeah, I just don't like the possibility of them throwing in or forcing anybody to throw interceptions. I think uh, it's not a great chance of them doing it really in any game, to be completely honest. So uh, we're going to go ahead and say false on that. I think that they're going to give up less than it, or they're going to force less than an interception a game this season. So um, uh, Eli Manning, yeah, he does throw quite a few picks, but I think it's more likely that he's not going to throw a pick than he is going to throw a pick against the Cowboys. So then uh, next one, Saints at Vikings. Uh, this one is a little bit difficult to predict for sure. Um, we're talking about a team on the road, the Saints, that is not particularly good on the road. But Drew Brees early in the season is typically pretty good. Uh, I think their offense is going to be clicking. I, I like the possibility of them going in here and uh, and getting the win. But, man, it, it's it's definitely a difficult one. So um, I, I think overall... The thing that I will say about this game is the Vikings at home, they're a much better team um, than they are on the road. They do tend to do a pretty good job of shutting down the run. Um, obviously, it's going to be a big storyline of what Adrian Peterson is going to do in this game against his former team. I think that the Vikings in this one are going to barely, barely edge out the Saints. 
Um, I, this one, again, is another just toss-up, in my opinion. It's so difficult to predict this one, but I am going to go with the Vikings, so I am going to say true on the Vikings win. So the next one that we've got here is actually one where I'm going to need to go false. So what we do, need, we do need to do is go back up here to token swap, and we're going to change this true into a false. So that's going to flop that one around. So now we've got ourselves an extra false. There you go. And we're going to go all the way down here back to the bottom where we've got the next Saints and Vikings one. And this one is about Everson Griffin getting a sack. Now, Everson Griffin is a pretty good pass rusher, very, very quietly. He's had double-digit sacks twice. In 2016, he fell short of getting two double-digit sacks. And what they're asking for is him getting a sack in this game. The Saints offensive line is actually pretty good. And again, he did only get eight sacks in 2016. He only had one game with even one sack in the second half of the season as well. So he definitely slowed down as the Vikings defense slowed down in 2016. So the momentum certainly is not going to be carried over from the 2016 season. Certainly not to say that he isn't their best pass rusher, but I think that if you had to consider the fact that he only got one game of uh, with even a sack in the entire second half of the season, we're going to go with false in this one against a pretty decent New Orleans Saints offensive line. Next one, um, let's take a look at this one here. This one is, in my opinion, pretty darn difficult to predict. This is Chargers at Broncos. Um, Broncos win is the is the result here that they're saying. So is that going to be true or false? Well, the Broncos defense is certainly elite. I don't think there's any question about that. Their offense, not so much. Um, they do have some good weapons out wide, obviously. The Chargers defense is, in my opinion, underrated. Their secondary is quite good. They do have some great pass rushers as well. Um, where they struggle is against the run primarily. So... It is going to be one of those games, in my opinion, where C.J. Anderson is going to have to show up and do something in this game in order for the Charger or for the Broncos to beat the Chargers. But I, I think that the Chargers are going to be a good team this year. But road division games are a tough start to the season, so I am going to go ahead and say yes. The Broncos are going to get the job done. They're going to walk away with the win here in this one against the Chargers. So that is a true on that one. Now, Chargers at Broncos regarding specifically Von Miller. Now, this one is interesting, I think. Von Miller having one or more sacks. Again, I don't typically like to predict true on these, but I am going to predict true on this one, and I'm actually somewhat confident in it as well. Von Miller has a sack in 10 of his past 12 games against the Chargers. Think about that. 10 of his past 12 games, he's had at least one sack. That's 13 total sacks in 12 games against them. That's more than he has in his career against any team. That is crazy. So yeah, I like Von Miller's chances in this one. I mean, he's talked about how he thinks it's possible that he could get to 30 sacks this season. If he gets out to like three or more to start in week one, it might not be that out of the question, to be honest with you. Von Miller is a freaking beast, dude. So last one, we've got the Broncos at the charge or charges at the Broncos regarding specifically Phillip Rivers completing 22 or more passes. He hasn't completed more than 22 passes in four straight games against the Broncos. And actually only two of his past eight games against the Broncos throughout his career has he passed for 22 or more completions. The Broncos secondary is maybe the best secondary in the entire league. Yeah, they did lose TJ Ward, but still... This is a very, very, very good secondary. And if Von Miller is going to be harassing Phillip Rivers all day, like I think he's going to, I think that there's a pretty good chance that Phillip Rivers is not going to throw for 22 completions. So we do have to go up here on the final one, swap that from a true to a false so that we can get the false. And there it is. And boom. And we'll go ahead and, and place that one in its final resting place. And hopefully we get 30, what is it, 32 out of 32? I don't even remember what the number is, to be honest with you. We'll have to go back. But, um, yeah, we've. Uh, this is the best guess that I have for all of these. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I know it was a long one, uh, but I thought it was pretty fun to go through each and every one of these and give you guys kind of my thought process with it. If they do these throughout the season and you guys like these videos, I'd be more than happy to go in and actually do this every single week. So you guys let me know in the comment section below if this was helpful for you. If you want me to do it earlier in the week, I could certainly do that. I tend to like to get as much of the information as I can because things like Odell Beckham Jr., for example, we know now that it's pretty 
possible that he is not going to be in the game. Um, and obviously things like the hurricane, I mean, that's a super rare one, but you know, things come up throughout the week. So you don't want to just get these sets and then complete them right away. You want to kind of almost wait till the last minute to get all the information that you can and then make the most educated decision that you can based on that information. So, uh, yeah, anyway, guys, I want to wish you guys the best luck. Let me know if you disagree on any of these and, uh, we can certainly talk about it in the comments section below. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.